Hey, Hammy here, back with you with the first part of section 5.2. Uh, we were going to get into the actual stages of mitosis, uh, but first in this shorter video here, we want to take a look at uh, what's in the nucleus, the DNA, and how they coil up in the chromosomes, because we'll be dealing with them a lot when we look at the stages of mitosis. Okay, first thing to understand is it, it is important to understand that uh, the human cell, humans, have 46 chromosomes, okay? This is your this is your DNA, okay, from your mother and your father. So you're, you say, you know, you kind of look like mom, kind of look like dad, okay? You have 23 chromosomes from mom, 23 from dad. Sorry, father is kind of covered up there, okay? Uh, and we actually kind of look at these when we deal with chromosomal disorders. Uh, sometimes when they do genetic testing, they'll do what's called a karyotype, okay. uh, where they will take um, all the chromosomes or DNA in a cell, and during mitosis, it coils up real tight, and they take a picture of them. Now, they don't all line up nice and neat like this. Uh, they actually have to take a computer or, or cut them, and they put them together based on size. So you see here pair number one, okay? These are what we call homologous chromosomes. This one, one is from mom and one is from dad, okay? So they're similar genes. Uh, they would have like hair color, eye color, something like that. Now, not maybe the same alleles. One might be brown eyes, one might be blue eyes, but they both have genes for eye color. And so they just line up all the corresponding or matching chromosomes for mom and dad. And you'll notice you have one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 22 pairs. The 23rd pair, right here are the sex chromosomes. So they're not quite the same. Uh, this would, in this case, it is a male because it's an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, <clears throat> okay? Uh, if it were a female, it would be two X chromosomes, okay? So this is kind of, again, over here, kind of a picture <clears throat> of just more of like an illustration of the chromosomes or DNA in a human cell. The first 22 we call autosomes, uh, and they have all our genes and traits on them. The 23rd pair we call sex chromosomes because they determine our sex, male and female. When we take a closer look at these chromosomes, uh, we see that, it, again, like I mentioned in the last slide, it's just coiled up DNA. Okay, and we'll learn in a future chapter kind of this actual structure of the DNA. Uh, we've heard about it being this double helix stuff uh, with bases A, T, G, and C. We discussed a little bit in an earlier chapter. So here's your double helix DNA. Okay, what happens is that DNA will wind around these little proteins that we call histones. Okay, little histone proteins. Okay. So then they, the histone protein, so here you can see the DNA in blue down here, is kind of coiled around. Uh, that tan thing would be the histone. And then that coils up even further. So you get, it coils around a protein. And then those proteins, those clumps or those strings of beads actually will curl up. Okay, will coil up into what we call chromatin. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is still usable form for DNA. So our cells can go in there and read that DNA and read the genes okay, that that needs to. For, chromat for mitosis, what happens is this coils up even tighter, further condensation. Okay, they, it condenses even more and it makes these little loops and it gets tighter and it coils tighter, tighter, takes the coil and coils the coil and coils that coil until you get this, you get, you know, whole long, big, long piece of DNA is coiled up and packaged in this nice, tight little X, uh, that familiar X-shaped thing that we have here that we call a chromosome. <clears throat> okay. Now, actually, it's not really an X because this side over here is one chromosome. And then <clears throat> when you copy your DNA, because when the cells divide, they need to have a copy for each of the daughter cells. The second copy is attached to it right here in the center. And I want to take a look at, <clears throat> a little closer look at this X. 
Okay, here's a little bit closer look at that human chromosome once it's coiled up for mitosis. Okay, so down, down this side, let me change colors here. Down this side right here, that would be one strand of DNA. And then this would be the second strand that was copied during the S phase. So that we have two copies, uh, one for each cell. They are held in the middle <clears throat> by some proteins that we know as the centromere. Okay. This picture here calls it the centromeric region. So often we just refer to the centromere as kind of what is holding these two halves, these two <clears throat> duplicated, duplicated strands of DNA together. Okay. Now, on in that centromeric region, we also have what's called a kinetochore. Okay, these little attaching attachment spots here. This is where the spindle fibers okay, are going to reach across from each end of the cell during mitosis, and the spindle fibers are going to attach to that kinetochore so that when the centromere splits, the spindle fibers can pull these chromosomes, these what we would call sister chromatids, because they have the exact, genetically, they're exactly the same. They're going to pull one to one end of the cell, and they're going to pull the other half to the other end of the cell, <clears throat> so that when the cell splits in mitosis into two new cells, you have an exact copy of those genes in each cell, okay? Because remember, the daughter cells formed in mitosis are going to be genetically identical to the mother cell. And so mitosis, uh, mitosis, we, we talk a lot in the next video, we're going to show how is the nucleus, this DNA, because that's a very important part of the cell, how is that divided up equally so that each daughter cell can be genetically identical?